Welcome to Fuzzy Butts and Friends. I'm Luke Robinson, your big dog, your host of Fuzzy Butts and Friends. And I'm glad to have back this week again with us, the executive director of the Puppy Up Foundation, Ginger Morgan. Ginger, how are you? I'm doing well, Luke. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm great. See, I love that shirt. I absolutely love that shirt. Tell us about it. Oh, you know, I love this shirt as well. This is, it's kind of hard to find a really good shirt that you can have a logo put on. So I actually went shopping outside of those print shop places and got this one. I think it's a Columbia. And is that it's a blue kind of Heather? Like I apologize. I forget that we're, we're, we're filming this on Zoom, but we're also <laughs> recording the audio for the podcast. So some of you can't see this. Is that like a blue Heather? It is like a like a dark navy blue heather. Yeah, that's a very it's handsome. Nice well, Ging too. Ginger's wearing a, a a blue heather puppy up shirt. Now, can people order that on the website? No. Well, no, I, I, you know, I founded Puppy Up. How can I get one? I like I like to have one. Why don't I have one? Uh, well, in the past, you've had many that look. All like right. Them. Well, we'll, we'll try, try to get me one of those, please, for next time. And we'll try to get one for our guest, because Leslie, our guest today, I think she would look great in one of those blue Heather puppy up shirts. So on that note, let me welcome this week's guest. It's, it's a tremendous honor. I tell you, we just celebrated our, our, our 10th episode, and every one of them have, has been unique and special in their own way. And many of them have been with people we've known for a while. And that's definitely true of this week's guest. Uh, we have with us Leslie Grinnell. She's uh, one of the founders of Eddie's Wheels. And uh, the history is uh, back in on the first walk from Austin to Boston, um, Ed came down from DC. Leslie, were you there? I was probably there. Uh, yeah. Was the yeah, vet conference? Right, the that was back. That, right, that was back in uh, 2008 or nine. I guess it was eight, Ginger, is that correct? Okay. I think that's correct. Nine. Yeah, so back in 20, 2008, nine, I guess we walked through the DC area and, and Eddie came down and Ed came down and met him for the first time. And I heard about the wonderful story about Eddie's wheels. And, and we've been friends ever since and ever since, and they've done such fantastic work for, for animals all over the world. So again, it's a tremendous honor to have you here, Leslie. Thank you so much. How are you today? I'm good. I'm great. Well, let's start out with, with the story of Eddie's Wheels. So, so um, I had forgotten uh, how you guys got your start. So I went to your website, and, and I love just the way it sounds. Your story began with a blue Dober Doberman girl named Buddha. I love yeah. it. Tell yeah. us about Buddha. Uh, well, Buddha was my husband's um, companion dog. He was doing mechanical service out of a van and she was his uh, trained guard dog. And she, um, she was a really smart dog and had a great judge of character. Um, but uh, when uh, she became disabled, she was pretty much retired. She was 10. He had a different job. He was working in Wisconsin at that time uh, doing mechanical work uh, in the car corrugated box industry. And one morning she woke up paralyzed. And I uh, took her to the vet, of course. And the vet said, well, you can euthanize her or you can take her to Tufts um, and have a back surgery. This was 33 years ago. Wow. Before there were MRIs, before hemilaminectomies were simple. Um, and my local vet wasn't even sure whether that was the, the case. Uh, all we did was an x-ray and um, they could see a little bit of spondylosis and maybe a compression, but she was really paralyzed. No deep pain, no reflexes. Um, so I took her home. They gave me some uh, prednisone. Um, I took her home. I got on the phone with Ed. I said, well, they, they recommended euthanizing her, but she's not in any pain and she's lying by the wood stove. And at that point, she started barking at me and he, uh, he said, I, it sounds like she's very much alive. And I said, yeah, we can't, we can't put her down. So he came home a few days later and we started looking into dog wheelchair as well. <clears throat> At that time, there was only one dog wheelchair company, Dr. Parks and the canine card company. We contacted them through the back pages of Dog Fancy Magazine. And uh, they very honestly said they didn't think that what they made would work for an 80 pound Doberman. 
so that left it up to Ed to, to do something. He's a mechanical engineer by trade. So he sat down with the veterinarian and looked at the skeleton of a dog and said, how can we support this dog in a way so as to do no harm? And he looked at the skeleton and that's the mechanical part of a dog. So he um, came up with the idea of creating a saddle that would mirror the shape of a dog's pelvis. And I actually, I love this. This is my, uh, my dog spine key ring. So that, and, that's a that's a spine and, and the pelvis of the, yeah, of the dog. Yeah, and that's the pelvis. And uh, so where do we have the pelvis here? So if you look at the pelvis, it looks just like an Eddie's wheel saddle. Here's a it's an Eddie's wheel saddle. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so he said, well, if we can support the dog on its bones, we can do it. We can support the dog so we're not supporting on soft tissue, and then we will not have wounds and chafing and skin breakdown. And then he put the yoke over the dog's shoulders. I actually have a picture of the original part right here. This is from uh, long ago. Oh, wow. All right. But there it is with uh, pipe insulation. And is <laughs> this padding. version, is that version 1.0 of Eddie's wheels right that there? That is looking version 1.0. This is Buddha's wow. part. The original wow. OG. The original <laughs> And yeah, these wheels. The original cart <laughs> with uh, pipe insulation padding and wheels off my daughter's radio flyer wagon. <laughs> <laughs> what a great so, story. But you know, that cart worked. It weighed about 30 pounds. You think you're wow. kind of heavy. This, this was made out of steel. So, 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 thir so 30 pounds plus 80 pounds, uh, the Buddha weighs, so 110 yeah. pounds. Goodness gracious. Yeah. So, wow. and the yoke didn't open. So, I had to thread the dog underneath the yoke. Uh, pick her up and get her legs in the saddle. First time I did it, she looked at me like, is there something wrong with your back, mom? You expect me to do this? And I said, yeah, boo, if you wanna go to the woods, this is how you're gonna get there. And the woods were across the street and she loved the woods. So that's what we did. We went for a walk in the woods two or three times a day. One day she forgot that she was in the cart and threw herself into the pond. That was fun. <laughs> but now, how long had she, had Buddha been paralyzed before you, before? How it was long about it a month. Her? Okay. She so was, yeah, because Eddie was out of town when it happened. Then it took him a while to design it and build it. But I got to tell you, that's pretty impressive for an engineer, that, 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 that turnaround time, because I've known many engineers in my lifetime, and to get them to do anything in 30 days, wow, <laughs> that's well, something yeah. else. He's motivated. I'm kidding. Oh. I, I don't want to yeah. lose our engineering audience out of there, uh, uh, so uh, I'm just kidding. I, I love yeah. engineering. Well, he worked for an engineering firm, and his, his boss had pugs, and, you know, pugs have notoriously bad backs. So right. his, his boss uh, encouraged him and said, you know, you should do this. There's a market for this, he said. And lo and behold, 10 years later, he quit that job and he started Eddie's Wheels. Well, but so. he's absolutely right. But, but I think the, the, the power of the story, and it really speaks to, to, to my heart and personally um, of Leslie, is, is the fact that, that Buddha was still had such a quality, a great quality of life, had such a strong will and spirit to live. And it was just the limitations of medical technology that was the difference between Buddha living and dying. And that's shocking to me. It's shuddering to me because I always think about that. It's always present in my mind all the time that the difference between a, a, a good prognosis or a longer prognosis is just technology yeah. and scientific discovery. So that's yeah. just, that's fantastic that you kept her alive for the 30 days that were required until Ed came up with an engineering solution that worked. And, you know, um, so and she only for... used the cart for six months and then she started walking on her own again. Oh my God. Wow. Then, I didn't read that on your she, website. And wow. then she lived for three more years. So when we started Eddie's Wheels, we thought we were just going to have one miracle after another. <laughs> we, were, we were very naive about all of the things that can cause mobility problems in dogs. Um, Ginger, so... you're going to say something. I cut you off. My apologies. Oh, that's okay. I was... Um, I forgot what I was going to say now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, it's just to, to fa it, that's great that you in 30 days, you, you kept her alive. You got her on the cart. Then six months, she no longer required the cart. 
She was was she a hundred percent healed at that time or? Um, she had developed uh, the ability to do spinal walking, which is a phenomenon that dogs have. Uh, they can walk using their reflexes. So even though by neurological standards, she was deep pain negative. If you pinched between her toes, she had a withdrawal response. So what happened was a few months into using the wheelchair, she started using her, moving her feet, moving her legs. And I was walking her on sidewalk on the way home from the woods. And I noticed that the sidewalk walking made her pick her feet up more than dragging. When she was on grass, she dragged. So we did more sidewalk walking. Um, and then because she was picking up her feet and moving them and getting her feet down flat, she redeveloped muscle mass. Right. And uh, over the course of the next couple of months, she got strong enough to actually walk without the wheelchair. Spinal walking is a phenomenon that now is documented in animal rehab circles. A lot of what they call IVDD dogs will become spinal walkers if they have reflexes. So say, uh, uh, say that acronym again, IB what? IVDD, intervertebral disc disease, which is what dachshunds, corgis, uh, basset hounds, beagles, cocker spaniels. Uh, this, is the, this is the kind of disability that is common in long back dogs. Um, and it's caused so, from calcifications in the disc material. The reason why dachshunds have uh, a lot of IVDD is because their backs are so long that at that, what they call the TL junction, where the rib cage ends and the lumbar spine begins, there's nothing to support that long span. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's just the leverage of being crazy dogs with long back legs that levitate and are, were bred for levitating, that they break their backs. And, um, but it's out also biochemical. These dogs are uh, prone to calcified discs. So there's, there's a lot of stuff at, at work here is calcification and uh, just biomechanics. Wow, that's, that's fascinating. So corgis, dachshunds, I knew doxies. Uh, um, what are the other breeds that are susceptible to it? Basset hounds. Um, actually, I'm seeing it in, in, in pit bulls and they don't have particularly long backs, but they're not very well made. And French bulldogs and pugs. So you really, that, this is just is a wonderful story. It really is because you, because by virtue of creating um, Eddie's wheels and this, this technology, this device that was able to um, help regenerate uh, Buddha's uh, walking and movements. And like you said, gave her the tarmac to uh, regain musculature um, mm -hmm. and shed off the atrophy, um, yeah. atrophy that had affected her. Her, her system. And so, um, so you kind of, you guys actually kind of created to a certain extent, the field of physical rehab in dogs, or you, you were a big part of that movement, physical rehabilitation in canines, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. We, wow. we got in here in 1999 and in 2000, the university of Tennessee started their program in animal rehab, which was a, uh, a, uh, certificate program that was a collaboration between the vet school and the School of Physical Therapy. And that program has continued to this day. So now there's that whole new field of sports medicine and animal rehab that we've been an intrinsic part of. Which um, school did you say that was? University of Tennessee. Oh, wow. Uh, Knoxville, yeah, back Knoxville. in the backyards of the, the foundation. Yeah, wow. David Levine was head of the, of, um, physical therapy department and, and Daryl Millis was at the vet school and they started a collaborative relationship and created courses in um, physical rehab for animals. And out of that came hydrotherapy and uh, all of the uh, laser technology and all of the other things that have helped dogs to maintain and regain uh, their abilities and their mobility over time. That's a that's that's just wonderful, and and, and we I learned about um, uh, uh, Knoxville University of Tennessee from Tripods had them on. I think it was actually our first episode, right. yeah. and I, I know you know Jim and Renee, and they're so yeah. wonderful in the work that they do um, for two and three legged um, animals. And so it was always I told them that when as soon as I was headed up towards uh, New York uh, for Walk Three, 
I was uh, it was on on my plan to stop by and visit there. And now that just that reconfirmed that I can't wait mm -hmm. to go visit uh, that wonderful facility. So 1999 uh, is yeah. when you guys first got your start. Ten years yeah. after uh, Buddha was 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 diagnosed, right? Right. Yeah. And so that's while wow, that's pretty much 22 years uh, on the nose, oh, and yeah. that's congratulations. That's Thank really you. quite something. Yeah. Yeah. Today and I made I like, my final payment on this building, so I have, we actually own the building now. Free and clear. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good way to be. So. Yeah. So I like what you said a while ago about you. You were feeling so lucky. Um, you were just on this this, this great streak uh, streak of luck that uh, you were able to uh, build a, a card that successfully that worked for Buddha. And then six months, uh, Buddha walked again like a miracle. Yeah. And uh, then you started the business, I guess. And so you kind of feel, felt like you were on this this high. And then you started your business because being a business owner pretty much for my entire life in one capacity or another luck in business is not always an easy thing so what happened once you guys finally decided and realized that there was an opportunity for you to change uh, make such a significant impact uh, tell us about that journey well it was terrifying uh, <laughs> i actually loved having a husband that had a paycheck on friday um <laughs> Understandably, I was, I was a self employed artist at the time. I was a potter and I just started a gallery and I was finally selling everything I made. And, and then he told me I had to wipe my hands and answer the phone uh, and try starting Eddie's Wheels. And, you know, I, I felt like I owed him that because he had supported me in my business. So we tried doing it together. Uh, we tried running both businesses for about a year. And then I gave up and uh, I just decided I would do Eddie's wheels. And mostly that's because nobody ever gave me a hug or broke into tears over a coffee mug. But every time I put a dog in a wheelchair, I got so much love. <laughs> it's so, transformative. It's yeah. transformative. There, yeah. Yeah. It, you, you know, I, I sometimes my, my synapses are firing on, on so many different uh, levels that I, I gloss over some things and, and move on too quickly. But, but, uh, you know, well, you got three more years. Is that what we said uh, out of Buddha? Three more years. Well, yeah, she died at eight, at thirteen. So really thirteen. So she, you, you would have euthanized her at ten. She lived an additional three years. Yeah. So you know, you know, percentage wise, you know, that's you know almost a one fifth uh, of of additional life, good yeah. quality life yeah. that you gave, that you blessed Buddha with. And I don't know about you, but if anybody offered to give me 20, 20 percent, uh, 15 percent additional lifespan, um, I, I, I would take that. Anyone would take that. I'd be forever grateful. So you, you, you guys really have transformed so many lives around the world. You know, she was a very spectacular dog. She was very wise. And um, but she was Ed, Ed's dog, though, right? Well, she became my dog when he started working all over the world. I mean, she. Uh, she, she uh, when I had my daughter, she became the nanny dog and she was a wonderful nanny dog. Um, and I, I ran a family daycare for a while and she was the, the nanny dog to six kids in a family daycare setting. <laughs> so she, she was a very, she was, she was just a really amazing dog. Uh, she could spot a bad guy across the parking lot. You know, she was, she was a, opinionated, smart, affectionate, couch potato, and athlete all at the same time. She was- Well, I, I too, it's, it's, it's amazing that as the power of dog it really is, the power, yeah. of, the power of companionship. I don't like to use the word dog or limit it to that yeah. because, because companionship can, can come in so many different shapes and forms mm -hmm. in this world, in this lifetime. Mine came in the form of dog, of, of, and more specifically in the form of Malcolm was, was my first companion, my mate in life. And um, I know you know a little bit about my story, but that was transformative to me. He changed my life. Yeah. I didn't know that people could have love or have a spiritual connection with an animal before Malcolm. I had no idea that that, right. was, that, that uh, even existed. And um, I didn't want him, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, I tried to give him away, but he broke me. And, uh, 
every day since that one day, I remember that one night, it was actually a night, he, I just saw Malcolm entirely different and we connected and he slept by my side every day till the day he, to the day he passed. Mm-hmm. And, 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 but he went everywhere with me. Um, he truly became my weight, uh, my mate. I played golf. He uh, rode shotgun in my golf cart. Now, speaking of carts, uh, so uh, he never barked at my backswing. Um, <laughs> I went everywhere where Malcolm went, uh, where I went, Malcolm went. That was my philosophy. And I never thought in my adult life that I would become that because I was not a dog guy when I, when I, when Malcolm came in my life and, and he sensed that, that he became the rock that, that has had such a profound ripple in our world, uh, the world of Puppy Up Foundation. And so uh, that just, it's, it's the power of companionship. And I don't think that we celebrate that enough. And, well, you know, I always say that we only make carts for the best dogs. And say that again, please. We only make carts for the best dogs that people have ever had. And, um, and I hear, you know, I, I hear the stories, you know, yes. we talk to every single one of our customers. So I usually start the conversation with tell me about your dog. And sometimes they just tell me about, oh, well, you know, he's Beagle and he's 10. But usually it gets a little more involved like that. Well, this was the dog that my husband gave me when he was dying of cancer. And that was 15 years ago. And th- this is the last remnant of my marriage. And or this is the dog that saw me through the divorce, or this is the dog that is the service dog for my disabled child. Um, so, you know, dogs um, fill such important niches, em- emotional niches in our lives. They, sure and they, do. Not are re- they are not replaceable. And each one of them is an individual. And some dogs are uh, greater than others at that. Well, you Ginger's know? dog, Pete, has transformed her life as well. Yeah, he did. You know, Luke, it's, it's interesting when you said that you didn't want, you didn't want a dog. I didn't want Pete. I didn't want to meet Pete. He was my sister's um, dog. And she said, oh, you have to meet my puppy. I'm like, I don't want to meet your puppy. I don't want to meet your puppy. And then um, it was in November of 96, I guess it was. And it was, she cooked me, it was around my birthday. So she cooked me dinner, right? For my birthday. So I could come out and meet her dog. And I sat down in the floor and here's this big fluffy puppy. And he just jumped in my lap and started loving all over me. And I was like, uh, he's not anymore. He's he's not your puppy anymore. And uh, her husband always has always said that Pete was the smartest dog they ever gave away. Yeah. yeah, he yeah. was he, he was something else. He was the first dog that um, St. Jude let in the hospital to play with the children. Wow, that's pretty amazing. That's great. So it was he, he was special, but he was, you know, he loved children, but he was still protective. He was a Rottweiler German Shepherd mix. I think it's too dark in here for you to see, but that's him on the wall back there. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah it, it, I, you know, it's so hard for me to have to to envision uh, Ginger as not loving dogs or not having that. That's the only way I've ever known her. Um, it, I walked into Memphis on part of my walk, my first walk and our, our lives intersected. She was running the Humane Society at that time. And uh, so I, I never knew that you were not a dog person. That's the thing. Well, it, wasn't, it wasn't that I was not a dog person. It was just that my sister kept saying, oh, you have to meet my puppy. You're going to love my puppy. And she had, her dog had an oops litter and she had wanted me to take one of the other puppies I'm like no I don't need I don't need a, a another dog I already had a dog and two cats and I was good mm-hmm. and until Pete jumped I sat in the floor and he jumped in my lap and my life had changed I mean it's they change their lives like, they, they change their lives absolutely and so so you, you said something and that's what one thing I wanted to clarify Leslie is that is, are the carts only for dogs or oh, have no you, no, okay. we, we do uh, cats. Um, we were uh, at Caskill Animal Sanctuary, uh, Farm Sanctuary on Saturday, fitting a front wheel cart. I, I've got to ask you a naughty question. What? So the, the the cat parents, when you, when you get a when you, you guys give them a cart, do they hug you and cry just the same as the dog parents? Yeah, or yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm teasing. I like to tease cat cat parents. Yeah. I know. Uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a dog I, guy, but I, I, got I, I, by, I got hugged by a goat on Saturday. You got hugged by a goat? 
a goat, yes. I'll eat oh, the who's, goat. That, who's that behind you right there? There's somebody right behind you. Who is that? In a cart. Oh, that's it. Oh. Is that a kitty cat or a puppy dog? It's a chihuahua. Oh, it, looks, it looks like a uh, Brittany, right? Or, uh, no, he's a long-haired chihuahua. Long hair, wow. You know, he is kind of uh, colored Look like a bird. Isn't it gorgeous? So, yeah, Finch's story, how, how I got Finch is, is a pretty heartbreaking story. I had a do another dog, a dog named Scout. He was a, a long-haired dachshund. Uh, Hello, dachshund. Finch. Hey, buddy. And, uh, and Scout, was, uh, Scout, was, Scout was murdered. He was taken from my yard and killed. Oh. And... Uh, so what, what is what is Finch's story? So Finch showed up um, about a month after Scout disappeared. Uh, he was brought to us by Paws New England, which is a local rescue. They bring up dogs from the South. Um, they don't discriminate against disabled dogs. So uh, we've done some business with them in the past. He was um, nine months old and four pounds. And um, in pretty sorry shape, but he was so excited to be here he was he was going all over the place he was investigating every corner of the shop so um and he was so cute and he had, was very vocal this dog has a lot of words so <laughs> <laughs> really cute. Well, he, he is a chihuahua so, long hair chihuahua. but he is yeah. a chihuahua and i don't yeah. think i've ever met a chihuahua that only had a few words to say yeah he has a lot of That's... opinions and he has a lot of words and well, he's he had, he's very he's very well behaved today. And he fell in love with me. So well, I, I, he, I guess did he make a cart when you? Uh, yeah, he had a broken back. Him? Yeah, okay. he had a broken back, so he was dragging himself around. So um, yeah, so we decided we would we would take him. I, I guess he, the question should, he needed should someone be, who would make me laugh every day. I was feeling very sad after Scout. Died. Yeah. So, I bet. I bet right. that that that's. I, I kind of moved on, but because that's a very hard story. I don't want to tell that story. I understand that, yeah. and I don't. I don't want to hear it. Ginger and I. Ginger used to run the Humane Society. I could never listen to any of those stories because I just get really mad, and yeah. I want to break things and break people. Yeah, I don't want to go. But so thank God you have Finch. Thank yeah. God you have Finch. You need that in your life. If yep. you have, if you have your heart broken like are you that, my boy? I believe. Yeah, you are. So, yeah, yes. So I so it sounds so you do lots of animals. Um, so I yeah, guess the I question have I should have asked is, is what do you not do? What kind of an, animal do you not do? Do you do turtles, reptiles? What do you not do? Um, for the Eddie's wheels. We haven't done a turtle. We we looked at an African tortoise, um, but it, um, we didn't do it. We didn't make that cart. Uh, mostly because Eddie was a little too disabled himself at that point to get down on the ground and, and do it. And it was a 300 pound tortoise. So, um, but we've done, we've done some farm animals. We do alpacas, we do pigs, we do sheep. Uh, we just did a front wheel cart for a sheep at a uh, farm sanctuary. It's very successful cart. I was so Did thrilled. you just post that on Facebook? I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah, I, I really tried to discourage her. I, I had had a few experiences with sheep and um, they were only semi-successful. And I, I, I had come to the wrong conclusion that sheep weren't curious enough to want to use a wheelchair. But this sheep is very curious and is all over the farm and I'm loving watching her go around and graze and that's, that's great. So there's another sheep up in Vermont that we made a a rear wheel cart for who's doing very well at another farm sanctuary. So I have an opinion now about animals that live at farm sanctuaries because they have so much positive interaction with human beings. Uh, they are more communicative. They, they don't just live with their flock, they live with people and, uh, and they're much more amenable to using a wheelchair, I think, so. Sounds like something we need in society as, as a whole. I think so. I really believe that you can have a relationship with any animal that you are have uh, kind kind intentions for. But but that's but that that but that's the power of companionship though. Is companionship right. comes in so many different forms and it does right. it, it 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 transcends a language communication, that yeah. love, the power of love. And you're yeah. right. And so I, I think that we should make the entire United States a uh, pet sanctuary. Just the whole thing yeah. should be a giant yeah. pet sanctuary in which people can also live if they choose. 
So what I always like to, Leslie, I always like to start with, with the need. So let's begin there. If, if I have an animal of, of, of any ilk um, and they have spinal or, or mobility issues, at what point do I, do I, do I arrive at the, the conclusion or how do I ask myself whether they need an Eddie's wheels? Well, I mean, if they are frustrated with their lack of mobility and want an independent lifestyle. So it's not complete debilitation. 100% right. No, I mean, if they're struggling to get from point A to point B, a lot of pugs have what's called pug myelopathy, and there's a disease called degenerative myelopathy that affects corgis and boxers and German shepherds, and it's very similar to ALS. Uh, it is a ultimately terminal disease, but it takes years to kill you. Um, and it starts out by your legs failing. And, you know, these dogs, I meet them all the time. Um, are, they're frustrated and they're kind of embarrassed. <laughs> and um, so when we put them in a cart, we're giving them back their dignity and their independence and letting them go back to being dogs again. Um, okay, so, I can't recall. You know, I, I, the oh, the only time I see these dogs not do it is when the owners are so invested in their dogs being broken that they can't they cry, oh my God, the dogs, they have, a, they have a, their own inner um, prejudice against disability and handicapped. Yeah, educational. And, and that's really hard to overcome. That's really hard for people to overcome. And, uh, and I, I, I struggle with that when I see people who uh, immediately go to that place of being embarrassed or ashamed of the fact that their dog is less than perfect. Because all of these dogs are perfect. They're all perfectly themselves and <laughs> they're doing the best they can. And what's perfect about these dogs is that they accept themselves as they are. Whether they're well, missing the, a leg. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, or the, whether their back end isn't working. I have a rescue out in the United Kingdom. She gets these dogs from Eastern Europe that have been horribly abused. For the most part, their back legs are rigid and useless. So she amputates both back legs and we make bilateral amputee parts for these dogs. And they are lying around the English countryside in their wheelchairs. And they're having a great life. And she dresses them with protective gear over their butts so they're not getting wounds. And they're, they're, they're just remarkable dogs. So I, and I, she's a revelation to me. I, when she first told me that she was cutting off their legs, I thought, oh, well, that's terrible. I can hang them up underneath, but you know what? We can create a better, healthier spine with those legs gone than we can trying to compensate for these rigid rear legs that can't be put back in a stirrup so they end up being tucked up underneath the dog's body. And spinal health to me is, is paramount. Because when the spine is healthy, everything's working well. All the nerves are working well. Yeah. Uh, well, that's that's really the the mission of this platform, I guess. Fuzzy Buds yeah. and Friends is to educate pet parents right. all around the world about issues like this. That 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 there is that pretty much you know whatever ails your companion, there is technology or medical. There's, a, there's there are solutions out there that are available, and yeah. so um, we're going to certainly promote um, this episode as much as we can to get that word out there that that there are that, that there are there are there are options out there that are available to pet parents that are affordable to pet parents, and all it takes is 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 just educating them. So there's not enough of that, and we hope to achieve that. But I this conversation reminded me, Leslie, of. Of, I'm, I think I have a better I, I, uh, recollection now of, of how we connected. I think it was through Carrie Snedden, and I wanted to get to him. Well, them, Carrie and Rob, Robin Snedden, mm -hmm. yeah. great human beings, yeah. wonderful, wonderful yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, I mean, they, they would do anything for their kids, and yeah. uh, they're, I love how they roll. They're my, they're my type of cats. And so yeah. I, I'm remembering now that that they had Chief and, and – uh, and Chief uh, was using Eddie's wheels at the time. But, but Gentry, maybe you can clear up my recollection. I, I think Ch Chief had both of his hind legs at first. 
or was it one amputation and then he had the second limb amputated because of some complications? You no, know, I, I, gosh. Do you remember, I Leslie? Think he, I don't think he lost his other leg. I, I think don't he think just he did had, either. He just was, he had, um, he had um, unsuccessful ACL surgery. That's right. it, right. That's why it. he ended up losing that leg. Yeah. And yeah. we met, we met the Snedens at the University of Pennsylvania. We delivered the cart there because we had just invented the clinic quad cart and we wanted to show it to the people at UPenn. And so that was a, a, a good excuse. We uh, knew the neurologist, the guy who was head of neurology at Penn. And so we arranged to meet Carrie there. And cause Carrie, cause chief was well known at Penn at that point. We also had just adopted our first dog who was born without front legs. So we had Willow with us in her front wheel cart. And there she was being sensational, an eight pound chihuahua tooling around in her front wheel cart. And we had a great time that day. Um, uh, and Chief was spectacular. He just strolled down the hallways at the hospital and acclimated to the cart so perfectly. It was great. I had the and great honor meeting. of meeting Chief. Yeah, um, at the end dog. of, uh, I, I met him in DC, I'm pretty sure about that, and then the final mile in Boston. Um, so he walked the final, ended up being, I think, two plus miles um, mm -hmm. with Carrie and Robin. It was a wonderful day. And uh, yes, you're right, is he had such a great spirit yep. that, uh, with just a time on spirit. Um, and it's, I love uh, seeing Carrie's uh, videos on Facebook of Chief in his wheels, like, in the snow out in the back playing and you know basically it looked like he was doing wheelies and you know donuts and stuff in the backyard it was i i was amazed at how well that that he did with the cart yeah yeah and you know i wanted to ask you a question too you were saying how, about how important spinal health is yeah. and you know i was thinking about that i don't see I don't think I've ever seen any literature about spinal health in your dog. What have you yeah. learned? What have you learned that maybe would benefit those of us who now have aging dogs or dogs of any age about their spine? I know, you know. Well, you know, I, I've learned not. more about spinal health because I'm dealing with, well, first my Buddha had a herniated disc. I assume it was a herniated disc. It might have been a spinal embolism, whatever the reason for her paralysis. She was paralyzed for a while. Um, so, you know, we designed a cart that would do no harm to the spine. We wanted to support the spine as a, the skeleton in such a way as to do no harm. So the yoke is on the shoulders. We're not going to press on the, on the on the spine itself. We don't have a girth strap that encircles the spine. We don't put the weight of the cart into the spine. We hang the cart on, on the shoulders and support under the pelvis. Um, dealing with amputees, what I see with rear leg amputees who have been rear leg amputees for a long time is that their spines become curved because what dogs do when they're missing a limb is they compensate. So they bring everything to the middle. They lock their front legs under their chest. They bring their rear leg forward and they try to center their way to the middle. And that creates a, a scoliosis and spinal curvature, which isn't healthy. It's not good. You don't wanna have a scoliosis. Um, you don't wanna be leaning, you wanna be balanced. So um, if we can get them in a cart before that spinal curvature happens and develops over time, um, we're preserving the health of the overall health of the dog because you should be in alignment. I go see my chiropractor regularly. When I'm not in alignment, I, you know, my neck will lock up, my hips go out of joint, I start limping, it's hard to get up off the couch. So, you know, all of those old dog syndromes are about spinal health. As dogs age, they develop spinal arthritis. Very often it's called spondylosis. It's, and so, you know, if you can maintain a healthy spine with supplements like cosequin or uh, glucosamine chondroitin, um, regular exercise, maybe some massage work. 
you know, I, I, I myself am getting, I, I myself am getting some old big dog issues. Uh, yeah, so yeah. I, I know so exactly what that's. We, we what, all need to take care of, you know, and exactly. there's all that compensation that comes from disability. And most of that compensation ends up in the spine. So we want to have a long level top line. When I look at other dogs in other wheelchairs, what do I see? I see droopy butts. <laughs> so is that, is that really what separates is, I like this this is where I wanted to go with because there are other companies out there that are doing that have cards so is that really what people like to call your secret sauce that that separates and differentiates Eddie's wheels yeah it's others? our saddle it's that welded saddle so. that there is the pelvic the, the confirmation of the dog's pelvis and that is determined by the dog's measurements and over the 20 odd years we've been doing this we have different angulation for different breeds of dogs. So a corgi has a flatter pelvis than a, uh, a, a greyhound. And we figured all that out. We have different algorithms for that. Right. Um, okay. So let, hold on one so second. This, so let's, so let's this, I, I want to so go, this, hold on one second. I want to go through this process from step one, because I got to go through this. So let's go through it from, okay. from the beginning. So I wanted to get here. We're jumping ahead. So okay. let's back up. So, so let's, Get everybody up to speed so where we're at and where we're at in this process so so carrie and robin had chief and then chief passed on mm -hmm. and then then carrie and robin have continued to be great friends of ours and supporters of puppy up for many many years now and so grace and my three-legged pyrenees um that i adopted a, a year and a half ago uh, he and I are about to get on a walk, walk three from uh, the beginning of the Hudson River up in the Adirondacks down to New York City. It's about a 300 mile trek yeah. that I'm going to be taking with the three legged Great Pyrenees. And mm -hmm. so, uh, Carrie, God bless him, I love that man. As soon as actually, as soon as I got Grayson, before I began, before I even thought about walk three when Hudson was still alive, the first thing he did was send me Chief's uh, ch uh, car chair. And uh, to me, that's it's the greatest of all honors that he did that. And um, so we, I talked to you briefly about the process, and we, we think it's going to be a little bit too big. So, so where we're at right now, and and sort of the nature of this podcast is is for us to talk about um, uh, Grayson and how we can get a cart for Grayson. Right. So, so that's why I wanted to start from the beginning. So let's start us. We know that Grayson, we're going to get a cart for him right. to help us walk the 300 uh, miles. So, so, so walk us through how we do, how we start that process. Well, you go. To, you know, I don't call her. That's my spam call. It's my six o'clock spam call. Stop it. Okay. You go to the website and you look at the ordering form. It says order a cart. You read all the directions there and you follow the directions and you provide us with eight measurements, the height to the top of the scapula. I wish I had my diagram here. The length of the body from the shoulders to the start of the rear leg, the widest part of the rear leg, the height from the pelvic floor to the ground and three width measurements at the shoulders, ribs and rump. And, um, we give you very detailed instructions about how to do that. And then you submit that order online. And if you can provide us with a side view measurement confirmation photo of your dog standing in profile with a yardstick or tape measure. And then we will virtually measure your dog and verify your measurements on the computer screen. Um, if we see any, diff any differences in the numbers you give us, we tell you, oh, we see B is uh, three inches longer than you did or whatever. And anyway, we work it all out. And we come to a consensus about what the measurements are. Um, and then we talk about the dog's disability. Now you have a three-legged dog. So what you, what you get is a cart that has an asymmetrical saddle uh, that will have a smaller loop on the side where the amputation is. Uh, and that loop will have a cover on it and have a neoprene cover on it so that uh, you can bolster the dog and keep him centered in the wheelchair. And on the side of the amputation, there will be a counterweight that will be determined by uh, the engineer um, so that the cart is balanced so that um, we don't have to worry about the cart tipping over. Um, 
for really big dogs, we sometimes put a hinge on the cart so that it breaks down into bolts in half for ease of transportation. Um, and that's about it. Well, that's um, definitely going to be my case is, uh, as we talked previously, is that I'll need yeah. something that's collapsible because, yeah. because um, there are going to be parts or areas, the stretches of road that, that yeah. um, Grayson will have to walk on his three limbs, that the car, right. car will not be, yeah. uh, it just won't be safe because yeah. um, you guys are up in the Berkshires in Mass, yeah. uh, Massachusetts, and uh, so you know, you know the terrain that we're going yeah. through because that's, oh, yeah. that's Kind of the is it Green Mountains. I think that's the Green Mountains over there. Yeah, but what, uh, what route are you taking on the New York to Albany? Are you taking the well? The we're, we're, or are you going to take Route Nine? What do you? Well, no, we, we walk on the through. through you're not going to walk on the through. We, we can't take the Taconic because the Taconic is a parkway, and parkways are not uh, accessible right. to pedestrian traffic or commercial traffic. Right. So that that creates a lot of problems for us because that would be great. Right. Um, and plus, but it plus all the parkways have really, really thin shoulders. Um, so, yeah. so we're going to be taking basically small roads, country roads, back roads, all the way down um, to I think Schuylerville, and then okay. we pick up nine. I think is where we first pick up nine. I might be maybe a little bit further north. Right. But, but the good news is, though, Leslie, is that there are going to be some areas that we're going to be able to jump on a, a biking trail, a hiking trail. And so that's he can use the cart 100 percent of the time yeah. and just cruise. We can totally cruise. Yeah. So 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 for me and, and, and this specific requirement for for walk three is that the cart has to be collapsible because I have to be able to strap it on my backpack uh -huh. and, and carry it when he can't walk. Yeah. But um but so we got the measurements. And so once once you guys construct the car, right. what happens? And so you, you build the car uh, according to the specifications. And yeah. then, then um, I would love to get up there to the Berkshires and do a fitting prior to walk three. That'd be great. Yeah. But I don't think I'm going to be able to because we're about four, four and a half months away. And that's I don't think I'm going to have time to set aside. So you guys will ship the cart to, yeah. to us. We have a wonderful... Uh, 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 veterinarian Ginger, what is the alphabet soup of the certification again? Uh, the the oh certified re rehabilitation the CCRP, yes, CCRP, you know. yes, I'm horrible with acronyms. <laughs> yes, that's what um, the University of Tennessee creates, they create yeah. CCRPs. That, so, who's your CCRP? Her name is Dr. Heather Laros, uh, she's wonderful. Um, the, the one that was here for a while in Memphis recently left, uh, I think she moved out to uh, California. So we were introduced with Dr. Heather's, what we call her, Dr. Lair. She's, she's fantastic. She's a, she's a veterinarian as well. Um, mm -hmm. so she's also caring for Grayson and he's currently undergoing heartworm treatment, which mm. complicates, complicates, it has complicated yeah. issues, but he was tired. a victim. He was a victim of abuse and neglect, yeah. which is how he lost his leg. Um, and so, uh, we're dealing with that. He's handling it well. Um, but, uh, the other concern, and I kind of want to talk and game this out while, while this scenario out, while I have you here. Yeah. Um, so you'll ship it to us, mm -hmm. then we'll work with Dr. Laros in the training, correct? And the use of it. Is that yeah. how it works? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of a no brainer. You just put the dog in the cart. And the dog just, I'm, I'm nervous. I haven't really go. tried I mean, it yet. No, they just go. I mean, well, thank well, you. You well, notice well, I was well, But I am life. nervous, though. Like, in in fairness, well, I, well, <laughs> fairness to me, even though I am very motherly about my boys, I, I <laughs> played both the mother and the father role, although I'm uh -huh. sometimes more motherly than, than I should be. Yeah. But but I'm worried about Grayson. In, in all seriousness, I'm worried about Grayson because he's a victim. He, he suffered serious abuse. He, he doesn't even like it when I cuss. And I like to cuss. And he'll run away from me. So I'm, I'm nervous <laughs> that... That that we 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 start fitting him with the outfitting him with the cart and something's going to scare him. He's going to bolt and it's going to mm -hmm. injure him and it's going to get scared and that's yeah. going to that's going to affect and it's going to impact our walk because he's going to have that fear. So it, it's a valid concern, though, right? Well, I think you you have to um, really psych yourself <laughs> and tell him that he looks beautiful. What a handsome, smart boy. Well, for instance, Ollie the goat was pretty nervous about this front wheel cart and he almost tipped over. Uh -huh. So I go, went over, I gave him a hug. I told him he had beautiful amber eyes and um, that he was a very handsome goat. 
uh, and that he had nothing to worry about. We weren't <laughs> going to let him land on his head. So, um, <laughs> and then he, he kind of relaxed and his, he rearranged his ears in a, a friendly, relaxed goat manner. So we knew he was feeling better. Um, you can walk next to, one of the first things you wanna check when you put him in the wheelchair is to make sure that his pelvic floor is in fact resting on the saddle and that he's a, a little bit more elevated than he normally is. We want him to be toe touching. Um, we, don't, we don't want amputees to be totally flat footed in their wheelchairs because we want them to notice the difference between being um, assisted by the wheelchair and not. So we like to bring them up a little bit, you know, half an inch, maybe an inch off center. And that's okay, that's fine. Um, so so, so is, the, so how the old outfitting- is Grayson? How old so is Grayson? Grayson is, good, goodness two. gracious, he's two, just turned two a little while ago. Okay. And did he have other injuries besides the amputate, the, the leg injury that caused the amputation? I no. don't, be don't believe so, Ginger. I don't remember anything, it, just the leg. Is his yeah, front end good? Does he have any shoulder issues or front, front end issues? I, I will say this though, this is a, an important discussion and don't let me forget this about the padding uh, because I will say this, he's very sensitive. Um, I was working with, actually I was taking measurements for, we were initially considering a, 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 a prosthetic for him to, to use as a backup as well. Does he have um, a stump? What's that? Does he have a stump to mount a prosthetic? No, no, that, that's one of the complications, but, right. but so, we're, so we're foregoing that right now. Um, it doesn't look like that's gonna work out within our time frame for a number, number of reasons. So, we're, so we're, putting, we're pretty much putting all of our eggs on the success of the cart, and I'm scared of that for a number of reasons. So I really wanna walk through it, if you don't mind. Yeah. Because he, the first thing is he's really, Grayson's really sensitive in that area. So, so, um, and, and, and I, 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 I have not, Dr. Laros, because Grayson is heartworm positive, Dr. Laros and I have not worked with him at all yet um, mm -hmm. in any form of therapy. We've got him, get him clear of that really, um, or he has to go through the second treatment. So we, he's very sensitive. So my first question is fabric and that area. Mm -hmm. um, how do we know that, that that is the right, it's not causing a discomfort? Well, we have options for padding, okay? The, 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 you know what the saddle looks like. It looks like the same saddle that you had in Chief's right. car. So it's closed cell foam. Um, we put a neoprene cover along the sides. We can, we can, for dogs who have sensitive skin or just need something cushier, we get sheepskin, real sheepskin that is soft and, um, Velcro's onto the saddle. Have you had have you had any um, um, allergenic allergic 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 responses or reactions or any reactions or there, there problems? Are some dogs themselves? who have you know some dogs have skin issues. I have a I, one of my dogs has some skin issues. Um, do, do you anticipate? Allergic, I, I think he's allergic to grass because he's he's got rashes that look like psoriasis and he gets very inflamed. Um, so mm -hmm. I cover his cart with polar fleece. That way I can keep it clean and it's soft. Okay. Um, um, so, we, so we can cover the saddle. There are several different options. Yeah, we have lots of options. Right. We can do polar fleece, we can do neoprene, we can do a combination of neoprene and polar okay. fleece. Or Excellent. And whatever works best for that, for your dog, um, we can make it as cushy as possible. Um, the next that that's good to hear because uh, we, we need to have options because the okay. one thing is I my concern is is that we're dealing with repetition right mm -hmm. uh, the the mechanics of, of of walking are very simple um, you know it's just a, it's just metrics right you you figure you got to accomplish so many miles per day right or well, and for walk three is we want to walk thirty miles per week so we would like to do five miles a day. Six That's miles awesome. would be great. And that would be, six miles would be great because that means we could take two days of walking off per week. So mm -hmm. based on your 20 year plus, 20 plus year experience of dealing with this, you know, we're talking, so my, one of my concerns is repetitive injuries. So do you think that the fact that he's only gonna be training with the cart for a couple of months and then we get on the road and we're doing it for, you know, several hours a day, 
Do you foresee any problems? What are your thoughts about that? Well, I don't foresee too many problems. I'm more concerned about the fact that he's had heartworm because I had a heartworm positive Rottweiler and yeah. it really affected his energy level and his endurance. So I think- Right. Um, well, we're, we're creating, she's top she's, yeah, I think your vet is going to be in charge of, of building up his capacity for, I don't think five miles is an unreasonable walk in a day, okay? That doesn't mean you don't stop or rest, <laughs> but yeah. you know, five miles right. is not, it's not that far. My yeah. chihuahua can do five miles. Dr. Laris is doing a great job of treating his heart with his heartworms because yeah. and thank goodness for her because we were doing a slow treatment that they do for some Pyrenees or I learned about the the uh, the, the rescue um, from where from which we adopted Grayson and it was doing a great job of killing the the new growth um, new eggs but apparently there were there was a one maybe more adult heartworms that were present Mm-hmm. in his arteries and uh so she's go- we're going through that treatment and uh so building up his strength his endurance is all a part of the training process but the good news about the walk is the mileage is not something we look at because we have a full day to accomplish five miles yeah. so so i've walked four thousand miles before with three pyrenees i guess that's right four pyrenees no three pyrenees mm-hmm. um Hudson, Murphy, and Indiana. So I've walked 4,000 miles with three Pyrenees. And so I have a lot of experience in that. It's just, you you basically just get up and you walk a mile, however you need, however long, much you need to, to walk and you stop and you rest. And for, for Grayson, we're just gonna have to assess however long he needs to rest. And then we'll get up and walk another mile and then we'll stop and rest. So doc, Dr. Dr. Laris will do a great job, I think training on that on him on um, endurance and fitness that he'll need for the, the 30 miles a week. But it's the interface and the ergonomics of the car is kind of my concern is, is, or my question, is that going to be a concern? I don't think so. I mean, we have, we have a, a more advanced car than we made for chief. It's called a variable axle cart, which gives you, um, choices about the balance of the cart. So I believe Chief's cart was just a standard balance cart. I don't think it was counterbalanced at all. Um, The variable axle allows you to go from standard to fully counterbalanced by moving the wheels forward. And every time you move the wheels forward, you're taking a percentage of weight and pressure off the front end. So, you know, I could imagine that uh, he might get sore in the front end because he's relying on the strength of his front end to do most of the work. To that end, um, do you so, recommend- you know, we could, So we could make your cart a variable axle, in which case you could change the balance of the cart if you thought that he was getting sore in the shoulders and offload the amount of weight that he's carrying on his front legs. And it's very simple. It's, you know, just move the wheels forward, unscrew the wheels and move them in the next fall hole forward. Inter- you interesting. Show you what it looks like. Sure, I'd love to see it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Leslie is going to uh, get a cart for the for the uh, for the audience listening to this via um, Spotify or iHeartRadio or any one of the other um, apps that are out there. I think that we're up and running on most of them. Ginger, I ne- we need to go and revisit the list and make sure we're listed with all of the podcast platforms. All right, Leslie's coming yes. back with the variable axle. A variable axle cart. Can you see? Axle cart. See this big long axle here? With lots I see of that. Holes in it? Yeah. And right now, the wheels are aligned with the center of the saddle. Okay. So um, when I put this down on the ground, I don't know if you can see it with my camera because it's. When I've got this cart on the ground, there's there's no downward pressure on my hand. It's uh-huh. literally totally balanced. It's neutral. Got it. Wait. Well, that's if, something if we, else. If we move the wheels forward, this strap here under the chest becomes a sling that offloads the front end. So we sell a lot of these carts for dogs that are aging, um, dogs with degenerative myelopathy, pugs with pug myelopathy. 
dogs, dogs with arthritic changes in their shoulders due to compensation from being disabled in the rear legs and having to rely so much on the front legs. It is our top selling and our most expensive product. And, and I think, you know, it's really changed the way people think about dog wheelchairs because they've always said you had to have a, a strong front end. Well, no, you don't. You don't really need to have a strong front end. That, that, that's amazing. I, 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 I'm not sure we'll have to talk offline whether that's yeah. gonna that's gonna make the most sense for Grayson, but clearly I'm concerned about front end wear and tear on Grayson. Yeah. And then certainly in my discussion, my talks with tripods, that's their concern too, because they've seen a lot of that in their history as yeah. well. So, so to that end, do you recommend Grayson wear booties or padding for his front, um, front legs? I don't know, depends on what kind of surfaces he's on. Okay, so just yeah, having to pull all the time or grass or natural surfaces. And pavement is the most abusive surface you can walk on, you know. Right. And, so and it's so not gonna be hot, right? Is it is it gonna be hot? It no, should it's be. The fall. So we're this time we're doing it in the fall. So we, we don't good. have that concern. So it's not gonna be hot and you're not gonna be in Phoenix. So that's good, you know. So. Right, but but there's so the, the weight, what is the weight? What do you think the weight of the cart is gonna be? What do you estimate that to be? Uh, how much does Grayson weigh? Uh, between probably 87, between 85 and 90 okay. was the most recent weight. Yeah, so it'll, it'll probably be sort of like that size. How much? 12 pounds. Eddie says 12 pounds. 12 pounds, okay. All right. There's Eddie back there. Look who came. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Ed, hey, oh, there, there he is. Okay, hey, Eddie, nice to that. see you, Eddie. <laughs> you want to come up and sit here? Oh no! I, I thought that the cart would have weighed a lot more than twelve pounds. That's no, not no, yeah, twelve pounds. Right. And the that, thing is, is, the weight of the cart is under the dog. Right, right, but you, but under you, the, the dog. That's it's wonderful. Not, You've been this able dog to. Dog is not being suspended by a cart. He's being supported by a cart. So it's right. different. Right, right. It, it it is, but but he's but they still have to pull the weight though. Is is yes. my the front the front. Exactly. The front axle still has to pull the rear end weight and that in of itself, that pulling action yeah. is going to create frictional, yeah. additional frictional force on the pad and cause additional wear and tear. Yeah. So I'm going to, we, we don't have all of the, the climate issues that are a concern. We so will have some of the- So did you use booties last time? What's that? When you did your big walk with your other dog, did you use booties last time? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You're, you're, you're spot on. When yeah. the ambient temperature gets uh, above 80 degrees, really, yeah. um, um, that means the asphalt, that tarmac is yeah. probably almost 100 degrees. Right. So yeah. when, it's, when it's in the 80s, your, your dog's paws and pads have to be protected. So for a good portion of the first walk, they had pads on. Let me tell you, I did not enjoy that experience at all because my kids just, my Pyrenees do, do not like the booties. So. No, my dogs don't like booties. They really don't. But, right. you know, sometimes well, because it, to, what kind of booties did you use? Uh, well, I, we, we, by, by the end of walk one, we found the best company out there. And that was Neopause, a wonderful, right. great Canadian company. That's because the it, it was, that I recommend too. Yeah, because it was higher up on the, uh -huh. the, the leg. Yeah. Right. Long exactly. sleeve, yeah. Yeah, like, long sleeve. Like, <laughs> That's a yeah, like high tops. I know. I never tops. heard it described that way, but you're right. It's long yeah, sleeve, long and sleeve. yeah, so it was the best. But I tell you what, when they get one of those off, I, I, I and we had to wear. We, they had to wear them in the snow too, because you can imagine yeah. ice on the road. And yeah. we might actually have some ideal deal with uh, some ice on the road as well. So yeah. we'll get we'll get booties for Grayson. I, we need to call. Speaking of Ginger, can we get? Yeah, I was just writing that down. Neil Paws on Fuzzy Butts and Friends. Yeah, Neil Paws is great. I I uh, recommend her boots for for my clients. Which she well. donated. I, I'm horrible with names. I can't recall her name. She's a, just a yeah. vivacious, vibrant, wonderful, yeah. wonderful human being. Yeah, she's great. It, what what's her name? I don't know. I don't remember. Okay, but she <laughs> yeah, no, she um, she is great. She donated, they donated um, booties for the, actually for the right. first walk multiple times. She's been great uh, throughout the years. This, we'll, we'll have her on Fuzzy Butts and Friends and mention you guys, so. And Luke, didn't uh, Hudson manage to take his booties off and you had to walk back? Like yeah, a that's, mile I, to I was, I was in the middle of telling that story. Uh, oh, okay. In, in in that it was the the snow, I think the war, the, the, the kind of the best example is Ken, Kentucky. We were in Kentucky 
And when you're walking and you're, you're trying to pay attention in snowy conditions and you're trying to avoid traffic, your attention is, is in high demand. And so you can walk almost a mile, which I did, and not notice that, that one of your kids has lost their snow boot. And so now <laughs> you're thinking, oh my God, when did yeah. they lose that boot? So I was walking on highway or, or, or yeah, highway 35 uh, between Tennessee and, um, or through Kentucky on the way to Louisville. And uh, I didn't know where we lost one of his booties, but I had to lash Hudson and Murphy to a tree on the side of the road and then hike. It was almost a mile all the way back to get his booty. Oh my God. But yeah. uh, but we'll get New York on the, on, on the show. And I think that will resolve or address those concerns. What I like about her boots too, is that she actually, when she first sent me some boots for me to have samples here, I would do fittings. I didn't, I didn't try to sell her boots because I can't be a shoe store. I, I just don't have the space, right. but I would do fittings for her. I, she gave me her, her, uh, her form and I would, I would help people find out what size boot to get. Um, well, do you, um, do you anticipate any other challenges that, that, that you can anticipate that we might have to, that we need to be thinking about between now and when we get on the road? I know there's a lot of things so we'll go, we'll go yeah. through a lot of this more yeah. in the great, great detail. Yeah, I think he's going to be fine. I think, I think you're, Five, you know, one mile, five mile total a day is very reasonable expectation. He might want to go further. I mean, one of the dogs that I, one of my more memorable dogs was a, a 90 pound boxer whose owner had walked the Appalachian Trail with him before he got degenerative myelopathy. And he walked six miles in the mountains the day he died of a heart attack. <laughs> wow. So. If we could um, all go that way, um, yeah. in the middle of an adventure, that would yeah. be fantastic. Yeah, the only um, feel that he had died doing what he loved to do the best, you know. Well, so. you know, it's, it's kind of it's kind of interesting. I've met so many people in my travels, and they're like, you know, Pyrenees really they're not known as the wandering type of breed. I'm like, let's see. Look, last time I checked, birds fly, fish swim, dogs walk. Nature made dogs to walk and walk long distances, and they can. It's just unfortunately we've sort of in, in our society have groomed them to be sedentary. Yes, and so I it's trying agree. to get them out of that sedentary mode. And what I love about Eddie's wheels is that you're you're getting dogs that are debilitated and limited in their ability to truly enjoy their nature and be true to the nature. So you bring the nature back to dogs at his wheels does. Yeah, one of the one of my biggest challenges is, you know, people tell me, you know, I always ask what the exercise terrain is and people will put down on their form, yard. And I say, uh, by the way, your dog is not going to be thrilled to use a wheelchair to stand in the yard and take a look. <laughs> I said, dogs need to go for walks in their wheelchair. They think that you got a wheelchair so that you could spend quality time with them exploring the neighborhood going to the dog park, hanging out downtown, meeting other dogs, sniffing lampposts, checking yeah, out can. garbage cans. That's why dogs like to go for walks. Do not get a wheelchair so that your dog can stand in the yard and take a leak. It's a waste of money. You need to walk your dog. It's also part and parcel of rehabilitating a dog with a mobility challenge. You need to maintain muscle mass. You need aerobic exercise. You and your dog are going to love having a car because you're going to become so tight, tighter than you have ever been. I mean, my job with Buddha was to walk through this mucky stretch of woods, pull her out of the pond, lift her over the fallen trees, <laughs> take the frog out of her mouth because she loved to catch frogs, you know, and it was, it was the best part of our relationship. It was great. You know, I, I you said a second ago, it's like, you know, don't waste the money, but really it's don't waste the quality of life. You yeah. know, that because Eddie's wills gives, extends the quality of life for our companion, lives for our companions. Right. And the last thing you want to do is with that precious three years that was given to Buddha is, right. is spend those three years in, right. in the backyard. And right. so I, I think that's a perfect way to, to view what, what Eddie's Wheels is, is, is it gives them the additional quality of life, but the pet parent has to give that life. And, you know, I also think that I think that once 
I think Grayson gets up and using Eddie's wheels. I think he's going to want to show it off too. I think he's going to want to go out to the dog park and uh-huh. strut his stuff is my yeah. guess, right? Yeah. I think you're going to put those wheels on him and he's going to take off. Yeah, I yeah. Think I think, yeah, you know, um, yeah, I just think he's going to take off. There's not going to be no stopping Grayson once, so he, I, once he knows he can move. Yeah, I think so too. And so my, my final question is, is, is so, so once we get him fitted with the cart and we've got him trained, ready to go, the last thing is he's got to go in style. So we're planning a decoration party, Sue. So uh, have any of pet parents done decorating par- par- uh, parties? Oh, Do you have any advice? Oh, yeah. There's, you, can, you can bling it out as much as you like. One of my employees, <clears throat> we used to do colors. We used to do anodized colors. But it turns out that the aluminum we use doesn't take anodizing consistently. So we couldn't really sell it anymore. They were starting to look like tie-dyes. So we had all of these parts of different carts in different colors. So she made a a multicolored cart for her French bulldog. And then she covered it with glue and glitter. Oh my gosh. (laughs) She glued and glittered the wheels. So that was- I actually like that because blue is Puppy Up's color and glitter. uh, And we we do want it to- we do actually yeah. do want it to reflect. So that's that's actually yeah. something I want to do. That's a great we also, setup. We also sell a flag and a, and a strobe light. So if you're going to be walking at night, you can put your strobe light on. We, do, we don't walk at night. Uh, we don't walk at night, but I, I might want that anyway, because during the day and the, and the fall, we, we can anticipate some uh, cloudy, very, very cloudy weather, I would imagine, yeah. overcast days. Yeah. So, so that's exciting because that gets me excited is that we're going to get Grayson fitted with Eddie's wheels. And once we do, we got to pimp out his ride. And we're going to, we're going to have a, we're going to have a, a pimp out ride party, um, yeah. a launch party right before the walk begins. Um, mm-hmm. It's looking more and more like September of this year. Nice to see you, Ed. Yeah, there it is. Here's the strobe light with the Eddie's wheels logo on it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, definitely put that in our cart that we're going to get from you guys, um, our shopping cart. Yes, you can stroll. I, I love it. Well, <laughs> well, you know, that's that's really my big concern is on the road. We, we already have a pandemic of inattentive, tra- inattentive drivers and distracted yeah. drivers out there. So my big concern is having the cart on the road is, mm-hmm. well, I like actually having something me- metallic and shiny because drivers can see that far away. Yeah. But, but. In, in the areas where we have limited visibility, my, my, my concern is having um, distracted drivers. And so that's going to help out a lot, bring that well, the visibility well, to them. Part. This part. Ginger, because that, that is a, obviously a big concern of ours is, yeah, is I think the flag, that we have visibility. So yeah, when yeah, we do the Finch, decorating party. The flag will help too. Yeah, on Finch's cart, we, um, we got we put this on the back in the winter time. So okay. I can find him in the dark. Uh-huh. I love that. I love that. Yeah. So, so we need to make a list of accessories then yeah. for Eddie's wheels. Start making a cool. list because we're going to totally pump out his ride for sure. Cool. <laughs> All right. So it's, it's, uh, we run out, we're running a little bit long, but there's, yep. we, we knew we had a lot to cover as always. Yep. And you've done a, you've done great. It's been very formative. Is there any, uh, other message, Leslie, before we uh, wrap up this episode of Fuzzy Butts so, and Friends, that so you would like I, to live with, uh, leave with pet parents? Yeah, well, the one thing we didn't talk about was front wheel carts. And giant breed dogs, we know, are prone to osteosarcoma more than the smaller ones. And um, an amputation is sort of the only way to deal with uh, bone cancer. Um, we, we make front wheel carts for Mastiffs and Irish Wolfhounds and Great Pyrenees and St. Bernard's. And um, I did a presentation at Tufts a few years ago where I showed a, a, a large dog in a front wheel cart and the head of oncology came up to me afterwards and said, you just changed the way I, I practice medicine. I didn't that, know that dogs could do so well in a front wheel cart. Is that John, John Berg? Uh, no. No, it was a it was a woman. I don't remember her name, but okay. um, yeah, tell, but, tell you us know, us it's t- really important that people know that that uh, there is a solution. It doesn't have to be a prosthetic. Most dogs that even have prosthetics also need a front wheel cart because there's a lot of wear and tear and skin shear with prosthetics. 
So they can't wear them all the time. Unless that prosthetic is articulated, they're gonna still end up hopping. And in a front wheel cart, they can have a smooth walking gait pattern with no impact into their cervical spine. So- um, And is that so, true of, of, of total amp amputation or partial and, and partial, both total and partial? Yeah, they can take it right at the shoulder. Okay, but but also partial. You guys can can engineer a front wheel. Oh cart yeah, we make we make we make front wheel carts for <laughs> partial amputations, deformities. There is a, a border collie named Roosevelt who was born with deformed front legs. They, they were kind of dangling chicken wings. They didn't quite reach the ground. We met him when he was less than six months old. He just died when he was eleven. This dog led a very active life. If you go on YouTube and Google Roosevelt the Border Collie, you will see dozens of videos of him downhill skiing in Maine in his wheelchair, <laughs> playing on the beach with a, with, a, with a gaggle of other Border Collies, playing Frisbee with his Border Collie buddies. Um, I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned that because you mentioned it early well, in the episode uh, yeah. about the front wheel cart. And I'm put, I made a note to get back to it and yeah. I never circled back to yeah. it. Yeah, so took... it's an important part of our business now. It's probably 20% of our business. And we, Eddie is the inventor of the front wheel cart. We made the first front wheel. Oh in, gosh, in that's wonderful. And in 2010, we adopted two dogs with no front legs to get better at this. And so we adopted Willa and Webster and, and we've changed our design based on our own personal experience with these dogs and the other dogs that we have made front wheel carts for. So, uh, and we worked with physical therapists and canine rehab people to figure out the balance on these dogs. And they do so well. And for the most part, they're healthy. You know, these dogs don't have terminal diseases. If we get the leg off and the cancer doesn't come back or they're gonna live a long, happy life and they're gonna have a long, happy life without the compensatory damage of hopping. So when you have a front leg missing, you're hopping and it's going right into your neck. <laughs> yeah, but, it, but at what point, so you, you, know? you think that you, right, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so glad you brought this up because it, obviously it's very personal to me because my first, what started my journey, my story was Malcolm, who was a front limb amputee from bone cancer. My right. first Mal Mal Malcolm got osteosarcoma. Yeah. We, did, we did amputation up in New England and uh -huh. then uh, chemo. Yeah. And, and so uh, what, this was back in 2004. Yeah. And, and I, first of all, I didn't even know that dogs got cancer back then because it just wasn't talked about, unfortunately. Um, and so I didn't even know dogs had cancer, but the, the, um, the orthopedic surgeon um, really didn't do a good job of preparing me for the extent of the, the trauma of what, what the surgery was going to look yeah. like. And when I first, when I picked him up uh, the day after, sir, I mean, it just, it was so true. It was so traumatizing. I was terrified that he was ever going to walk again, the extent of the, of the amputation. Yeah. And what was so powerful for me to watch this um, uh, unfold was within a matter of days after I picked up Malcolm from Nevog in um, Waltham, Mass., Mm -hmm. um, within a matter of days after the fentanyl had worn off, I was taking Malcolm um, outside. Um, using a towel and just within a couple of days he no longer wanted me to use the towel he was moving on his own and it was it was magical and his will to move on three limbs was so um, extraordinary and within a couple of weeks he was training squirrels on three legs it was just such a transformation and it was so powerful to me. So the question I have for you, and this is important for, for, for pet parents with dog cancer, because I was able to see Malcolm um, have pretty much 100% mobility, the best that he could achieve on three legs. So what point does a, a cancer dog pet parent determine or decide when their companion or when their, their companion needs an Eddie's wheels, whether it's front or, or rear end? Uh, I think it's a combination of age, um, how old the dog is, what kind of regular exercise they're used to getting, what limb is missing. I tend to think that every three-legged dog should get a cart for the long walk of the day. Doesn't mean he's gotta be in a cart in the house. 
or to go outside for a quick pee. But in terms of maintaining spinal health and the integrity of all the other joints, why not? I think why you're. Not? I think why I think not give the dog a balanced way of walking? No, you're, I mean, you're one right. Of the, one of the things that when I first came across Tripod's website, they had a picture of a of a German Shepherd running on three legs, front leg amputation, and I could see the elbow jutting out on the remaining front leg, and I said. He's got elbow dysplasia because he's hopping on three. <laughs> that, that must be Jerry. He needs yeah. a wheelchair. That would be Jerry. And I wrote to Jerry and I said, Jerry, it's great to keep these dogs alive and amputation is not the worst thing, but a wheelchair is truly a, preventive, a piece of preventive therapeutic equipment that's going to preserve the function of the rest of the dog. So uh, absolutely. I, and Jim, what, what Jim and Renee. To, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, I ahead. encourage people to get a cart, you know, um, early on. Well, um, Jim and Renee, Jim and Renee, they, they learned their lesson. So you, they learned the lesson from, from your talking to them because that was the point that they brought up um, on, on the podcast and, and, and subsequent discussions with them is, is they've learned the, the wear and tear that walking on three legs yeah. does to our companions. It, it, was, it was the case with Jerry, their first uh, three-legged dog, and Wyatt, the, the, the one that he just recently lost, unfortunately, um, that, that walking on three legs does considerable amount of wear and tear. So I, I like, I really like what you just said. And you put this whole, I think you framed out, Leslie, the whole episode for me. Is that, is that yes, dogs can walk or, or companions can walk on three limbs, that's right. And they should because of all the, 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 the muscles and the coordination and all the things that rehab it does for them. However, on the, the adventure hikes, the adventure treks, mm -hmm. that's when you should consider and that's when you should use the support because the Eddie's wheels or the support system is the thing that minimizes the wear and tear. Right, yeah. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. We want to Excellent. we want to create healthy joints and a healthy spine. So it so it actually Eddie's wheels in that regard does extend uh, the the life of your companion as well. Absolutely. Well, this was just such a wonderful, informative uh, 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 episode of Fuzzy Butts and Friends, Leslie. I've learned so much uh, today, so much about the, the rich right. history um, of your of your wonderful company and how how much you've touched the lives. Of fuzzy butts all over the world. Ginger, have I have I covered everything? Did I miss anything today? I don't think you've covered pretty much everything. Um, Leslie, what is your website for people to go to? It's wheels I E D D I E S wheels dot com. Okay. We and are you on social? A, you're on social media as well. Mostly Facebook. Um, I, I'm you know I'm old and I I don't TikTok or Instagram and I've kind of let YouTube go to the wayside, but there are 350 YouTube videos that you can access right from the Eddie's Wheels um, website. The click on the YouTube uh, icon, and it brings you to our channel. Um, and there are some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful videos on that. Um, many of which were taken the day the dog came and tried out the cart for the first time, so people can see just how willingly dogs will accept a wheelchair. Because everyone worries that their dog is going to be the only dog that's going to say no. And you know, one of the things that drives me crazy, they'll send me a picture of the dog. And the chest strap is choking him. And it's like, the dog won't move. And I say, loosen the chest strap. You're choking him. <laughs> well, well he needs let's, to let's be hope able Grace, to stretch out when he walks. So let's hope that Grayson doesn't, like that. doesn't break your record and become the first dog to reject yeah. Eddie's wills. I don't think so. I, I'm but sure usually, he'll... It's usually a silly little thing like that that restrains a dog from enjoying a wheelchair. So uh, no, no, we're, we're and it, he's gonna love it. It's gonna yeah. be great. I'm excited yeah. for it, and we're gonna yeah. shoot a ton of video. And yeah. more importantly, we're doing a documentary as well. So we're gonna have lots of video to share with you guys. And when we when this podcast airs, well, you're not uh, when, when this podcast airs, Leslie and Ed, we'll, we'll we'll link to the show in the show notes. We'll link to some of those wonderful videos on YouTube and your website as well, where people can go right. and learn more about Eddie's Wills and apply if they have uh, a two or three legged dog that's debilitated. Uh, boy, Leslie, thank you so much. I know much. we're gonna be about two hours away from us. So maybe we'll hop over and catch you at the end of your walk. 
Oh, well, yeah. I, I am going to, G Ginger and I are, I'm, I'm assuming it's Ginger that's going to transport us up there two weeks prior to walk three. Um, mm -hmm. But whatever, whoever does, however we get up there, we will. Are you starting we, in the city or in Albany? No, no, we, we start at the origin. So we'll start in the Adirondacks at the Henderson okay. Lake. That's in okay. Newcomb, New York is the beginning of the Hudson River. So that's right. not very far away from the Berkshire. So we will make sure, oh. I, we will come up. I, Ginger, please make a note of this. We yeah. will we will make it a point to come up to Eddie's Wheels, see you guys up in the Berkshires, and we will film it and make it a special event. Great. Thank you guys for all your help. Does that sound good? Yeah, sounds great. All right, well, let's make good it luck. a date, guys. We look forward to it. Leslie, Eddie, thank you guys for all thank you, you so do, for what you've done. You guys are indeed friends of the Fuzzy Butts, and you're welcome back here anytime to thank share you. the wonderful work that you guys do. That ends it for this episode of Fuzzy Butts and Friends. We'll see you next time. Puppy up. Talk soon. Yeah. Yeah.